Sunday is good news. You're listed in the will. So now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable unto you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. We've all heard that adage from Ben Franklin, I'll bet. In this world, nothing can be said to be certain except death and death and taxes. You got it. And sometimes these two intersect in a toxic mess. Like when families feud over their wills. I read an article this week called Eight Signs That Your Family Is Going to Fight Over Your Estate. It was pretty dismal reading. And I'll spare you all the things on the list because I bet you can guess them. But sibling rivalry was top of the list. Also economic disparity of those receiving the inheritance. Substance abuse can sometimes be an issue or someone seeking to unduly influence the estate holder. Sometimes we have people that are certifiably crazy. And then there comes, you know what's coming here, that late stage marriage. Who can forget Playboy bunny Anna Nicole Smith, who married 89-year-old oil tycoon J. Howard Marshall. You remember that? She was married just 14 months before Mr. Marshall died. And then the day after, Anna Nicole Smith and his son started to feud about the 50-50 split of this $1.6 billion estate that she said she was promised. They fought about it until she died in 2007, at which point Anna Nicole Smith's daughter took over the fight to finally, just a couple of years ago, it was settled in favor of the sun. So it goes when one operates with a philosophy of what I would call scarcity. When we image that there's only so much goodies to go around, so we need to run around looking for pots at the end of other people's rainbows to see what we can amass for ourselves to give us comfort, to give us power, to give us access. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that inheritance is not important. It is, and we should all want one. And also, I have good news. I just studied what I believe to be the most important will that there is, and you are in it. But there's something kind of different about this will. It's not your typical will, and what's more, the way and the timing of which you get the goodies of this will is actually kind of alternative. Today, you see, is All Saints Sunday. That's why my par the pyramids and my stole are white, the same color that we use at Christmas and Easter. It is an ancient, ancient festival. From the fourth century is when this festival began for us to remember the martyrs of the early church who were persecuted and died in the faith. And then we go several more centuries, likely in the 800s, Pope Leo expanded the observance to also include all who have died in the faith. So this morning, we continue that tradition. In our prayers of intercession, we will name by name those on our own parish register that have died over the past year. We also have cards, maybe they fell out, I hope not, in your bulletin. And you're gonna use those in just a little bit, I'll tell you how. But these rituals, they remind us that we are all part of a larger story, that we are part of a rich history, that we stand on the shoulders of others who have gone before us, others who have passed on an inheritance. And it humbles us. 
On the one hand, it humbles us because it reminds us that there really is no such thing as a self-made person. We spring from others. And on the other hand, it reassures us. It reassures us that we are not islands onto ourselves, that we have a cloud of witnesses that have nurtured the seeds of faith that have been planted within. So we connect to an ancient, ancient tradition, first by remembering. Paul writes, and we just read in Ephesians, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. So first we remember. We remember the saints in our lives for whom, from whom their labors rest. Saints who invested in you. Some, I'll bet, taught you directly about the word of God. A grandfather that made you sit still during morning devotions. Or an aunt with questionable vocal skills that never let that stop her from belting out hymns in church. Maybe it's a friend Maybe it's a pastor or a teacher that made you do silly games in some retreats when you were little, but they taught you profound theological truths. Saints of God who invested in you. Who are they in your life? And then there are some saints who are more indirect in their influence. They might not have known that they were saints. As you watched them, you watched the choices they made the priorities they established, the way they spent their time and their money. And you watched and you took that in and you helped that, that helped you to develop your own value system and the choices that you now make. So today, as you listen to the beautiful offertory, as you wait to come forward from, for communion, I hope that you will grab a pencil in your pew rack and you will write by name the saints in your life. And perhaps not only the name, but also the attribute. What is it that that saint passed on to you? Was he always patient with you? Was she always telling you that you are valued and loved? Picture them specifically by name. If you don't write it, close your eyes and see them. Remember them. Give thanks for them. And know that you are joining a tradition that spans 1,700 years. Years as you connect with your forebears who now have transcended death and live in the church triumphant. So that's one aspect of All Saints Sunday. But there's another dimension to this day that along with this legacy remembering, which is largely a passive activity, our lessons also call us to respond, to do something. If you listen carefully to Ephesians and then to the gospel according to St. Luke, they don't stop at recollection. They also demand something from us. They demand a radical way of looking at the world. They are, indeed, along with remembering that inheritance, they are a call to action. You see, this inheritance isn't something that we all just get to fight about at the end of somebody's life. In fact, this inheritance is so lavish, it is so generous, that we're not supposed to wait until somebody dies to inherit this inheritance. It is given us in our baptism, and in fact, the only way we can enjoy the inheritance is if we live according to its riches now. Thanks be to God, you are listed in the will and you are destined, destined to receive nothing less than the kingdom of God. 
This isn't real estate. This isn't trust funds. This is nothing we argue about. This is something that we share. The kingdom of God. In fact, Jesus talked about the kingdom of God The only that more than anything else. Money and the kingdom of God. Those were the two things that he focused time and time again as he spoke to his disciples. As he said, such is the kingdom of God that you usher in. We, everyday saints are the ones who have the opportunity to bless the poor, to let the oppressed go free, to love our enemies. Like Callie said, that when someone is against us, when we have an enemy, we don't retaliate. That's not a part of the equation. A community that we help to create that brings dignity, tolerance, respect, compassion. Do you see? These are our inheritance, but they are only received when we go out and we do it. When we become instruments of the riches of God's grace, you and me. A Southern writer named Michael Malone, maybe you've heard of him, he wrote a book some years ago called First Lady. And in it, there's a minor character. He's an Episcopal priest. But he says something about saints that I think rings true. He says, I'd say saints are people the light shines through. Light shines through them and illuminates what they are. The light just goes right through them to what they love so that we can see its beauty. This is the incredible truth of our identity and our destiny. That we are baptized children of God. That we have been named and claimed. And we are called to claim the inheritance that is ours by living it each and every day. The inheritance is that we allow the light of Christ to shine through us as saints of God. What we have in the word of God is like an advance guarantee. It's like a pledge of that inheritance that we can bring that vision that Jesus creates in glimpses throughout our lives. Indeed, our eternal life has already begun when we live in to the promises of, the, of our baptism that we allow the Holy Spirit and its light to shine through us. So on this All Saints Sunday, let us thank God. Thank God for the riches of God's inheritance where all are welcome, none are turned away. Thank God for our forebears who forged the way of the church despite persecution and fire to remember by name on our own hearts the very saints that showed us how to love, that showed us the love of God, and also to give thanks that you and I, we are saints of God, called to bring that vision of God, the God's kingdom, to here on earth. And we can do that when we bless the poor, when we love our enemies, when we treat others as we want to be treated. And so we sing. Just in a few moments as we sing, blessed are they, rejoice and be glad. Yours is the kingdom of God. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus.